Hello and welcome back to the Chatterke podcast, where usually Connor and I discuss media in the form of uh, reviews or topical-based discussions. Obviously, the reviews and they're more solo with Connor doing maybe the occasional one if I can get him to do one. Um, but anyway, I'm your host, Drinking Thomas Hughes, and today is something different. I haven't. I don't think I've done a video game review yet on uh, the podcast. I think this might be the first one. Uh, I mean, technically, I've. We've done ones where we've talked about our impressions of games, but I don't think I've done a solo review on a video game. I could be wrong if I am wrong, and it's that's on me. Uh, but either way, today I'm going to be just some game I played over my Christmas break I had from work. Uh, I say break, I was still at work, just less hours. But I managed to get time in, and then my New Year's Eve was spent just finishing off this game, and then I spent... Uh, the day after New Year's Day, so the second of January, just wrapping up the ex- extra chapters on it, and that is uh, Alan Wake remastered. Uh, I pick, I haven't, I played Alan Wake, maybe like 2016, 2017, whenever I first played Quantum Break, because I know with the that game you got um the Xbox 360 Alan Wake game for free on it, and I'm playing a bit of it then. When I've gone back to it now, I realised I did not get very far in that game at all. Um, it's in the first episode still, apparently. I must have got, not realised how to properly play the game compared to this time round. So yeah, obviously it's been a while since I've played it. I, I reinstalled it a while ago because I realised I still had it. And I was going to play it, especially with Alan Wake 2. That being really successful was supposed to be really good. And I was like, okay, I'll play this to play that. And it just, it just never happened. I ended up uninstalling it for space. And then I think Connor mentioned it on a podcast. It was a podcast, it was a live stream, or it was just after we finished doing one or the other. Uh, obviously, I think it's a podcast, actually. Yes, it was. Uh, he obviously brought up the fact that you could, if you buy Alan Wake 2 on Epic Games, which is on sale for a re- really good price, really, you got Alan Wake Remastered for nothing. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'd rather play the remaster than. Just go back to the old port. Uh, so I did. I picked it up, installed all the Alan Wake games, and finally sat down to play Alan Wake Remastered. What day did I start playing it? I think I stopped, I think I did the first episode the day after Boxing Day. I think I did the first one then. I think I did the second one either the first or the Friday that week, and then I, I finished it up to episode six on New Year's Eve, and then I finished the last two chapters. Obviously, uh, day after New Year's Day, and honestly, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good game. I, thought, I like the horror. I'm a big horror movie fan. I'm usually pussy when it comes to horror games, uh, as seen in many live streams I've done with Connor when we've actually played horror games or solo videos I've done on horror games. I'm usually shit scared while playing them. Um, so I, I was like, okay, just fuck it. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. I, and I jumped in it, and I quickly got a hang of. The control schemes, which is literally just put your light, then just shoot an actual gun. Um, but I, I, I just don't remember it being as straightforward when I first played it. But then again, I'm a bit more okay now with horror games. Not fully, but I'm better than I was back when, obviously, I first tried to play this game. So I'm guessing that might have played into why I got petrified half the time. I remember, I remember there's been stuck at this one bit when I just couldn't get past this one bit of light. But I think I know which part it is now and if I did it just ran all the way across I would have been fine but instead I just got stuck and couldn't figure it out whereas this time I knew exactly where I was going and if I didn't then I've done the smart thing okay where the fuck am I going quick google okay I just need to go that way fine simple um let's say it, it's it's really good the graphics are decent obviously I've had a few glitches with the remaster sometimes when you step back or angle the camera in a certain way the texture all goes weird on the screen but if you move forward and it, it corrects itself so i don't, don't know what that's all about i think it's just like a it's, it's just fucked for some reason in certain parts um that's my main complaint with it um my other main complaint would probably be from the expand the obviously the extra two chapters the fucking which are more puzzly and more jumpy um i'll get into exactly what they're about that in a bit uh obviously in those ones the jump inside of it and it kept fucking me over even though I clearly landed on something it just decided to kill me afterwards and I was like okay what the fuck and then the other bit is 
a game the game mechanic where basically if you're showing your light at the a word that will happen obviously whatever the word says like the, but the bit that pisses me off with that is there's some that say supplies or reload which drop ammunition drops uh batteries for your torch uh, but for some reason because it drops it from a height instead of just releasing it on the ground it drops from the height and they bounce and a lot of it will actually if you especially where some of it's placed sometimes it's placed in a good place but then a lot of times they're placed next to a cliff so they just bounce straight off the edge and it's like okay so what you're saying you need to be right next to, to catch it but when you're right next to it you can get hurt from obviously the the light burning it can just actually hurt you so it's just a case of you need to be a reasonable space back but you got to get to it before it falls off the cliff which i find really stupid so those are my main complaints with the games so that's all i'm really going to complain about is the few uh graphical issues with the port uh the light situation uh with the ammunition falling off the cliff and the last bit i complain about is the uh, stamina and just the running mechanic in the game it's it's fucking awful it doesn't even tell you there's a lot of games will have like a will tell you obviously when you can run again it'll tell you how much stamina you're using this doesn't you'll run until you start getting tired and then you'll start stag staggering and struggling to run and you'll stop and then you'll slowly get like back into the position where you can go okay this looks like i'm about to start running again but especially in the dlc which involves uh, some sections where it's, you need a lot of running it's difficult because of the fact that it does not tell you when your stamina runs out how much stamina you've got going when you can use your stamina again because of all this not being told some parts will be frustrating uh, if you're going for a more run because as i say some areas require you to run rather than take your time because the more you take your time the more you're gonna get fucked so it requires you to really run but as i say you're kind of fucked because it doesn't tell you how much stamina you got on the screen so that's my only complaints i'll have with this game um story-wise this game is really good it's crazy it's kooky uh, there's a lot going on there and obviously i was gonna i was at one point after i uninstalled the the 360 version off my xbox series x and was debating just picking up alan wake 2 on there I was going to just jump straight into Alan Wake 2 and ignore this game. And I was looking into it, I was like, can I play this game without playing this original one? And a lot of it, especially even the people who made the game, are like, yes, you can. Yeah, it's not really necessary. Yeah, there's some stuff in these games that a good bit of information you might need, but you can just sort of jump straight in if you wanted to. And I was like, I might do that. But then obviously when this went on sale on Epic, which I think it still is up until the 10th of January, I think that's when it, the sale runs out. Um, I was like, okay, fuck it. I've got it. I might as well jump into it now. I've got it all installed, so I might as well do it. And I'm glad I did because I said to Connor in a message because as I, as Adam now, as far as I'm aware, he's still playing it. He hasn't finished it yet. He hasn't picked. It, he hasn't played it for a bit because he's been playing Monster Hunter. He's got addicted to that again. Um, but there's a lot of story pieces you see that may not be important important in the next game but i know there's stuff to do with that in the game um for example the herald of darkness song which is obviously the new uh, new gods of asgard they're in this first game which is a nice little oh that's pretty cool because when i first started playing it there's two old guys one with an eye patch i was like that looks like the guy from the new gods of asgard band obviously that's an alamite too and then later in the game it's actually revealed that they are uh, new gods of asgard and it's like, oh, okay, and there's a whole set piece, which is very Left 4 Dead 2, uh, which mission is, is it? The one that ends on the, the concert stage, I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head of Left 4 Dead 2, but there's a mission that's in this, which is very similar to that, um, where you have to basically defend a concert stage as the hordes of the shadow monsters are attacking you, and you basically got to light up everything, um, light up the fireworks, blah, blah, blah. It's very similar, and I was playing it, I was like, this is very similar. I was like, obviously, it, like most games, really, like a lot of times it is very repetitive. Um, I think the one thing that annoyed me the most with this, um, in terms of the repetitiveness, is the fact that every time you pretty much end the chapter, every time you pretty much end like a certain cutscene, a lot of times you'd literally just be like, okay, where's my weapons? you got to get more weapons again. 
you you literally have a decent amount of ammo and then you gotta get more so that in, t in terms of obviously that that was pretty annoying uh, whereas in the dlc that wasn't a thing okay when you finish the dlc then the next dlc you gotta get weapons and that again but you get them pretty early but every time it shows little cutscenes throughout you don't lose your weapons you don't lose anything you literally just keep going all the way through whereas i say the main game pretty much most of the time you'll pretty much be losing your weapons and you're taught having to get a new one on a constant basis which is it's, it's pretty annoying i feel like in some situations it made sense i.e when you're in prison and when you're in the nut house that made sense in terms of losing the the stuff but most of the other times it didn't and it's just like okay so why have you just like not got anything here that makes no sense um like you'd be in the middle of a cutscene like oh, i'm going to this place and it it take you to a cutscene take you elsewhere and then you got nothing and you're gonna walk and then you eventually find it again it's just like okay what do you just let me start with all this shit it's it, it's a bit it's a bit annoying but as i say it is really fun it's still a really fun game i like the idea of like there's this other realm that's in like in the lakes kind of like a portal to this other realm and this town kind of in, gets engulfed with darkness because there's this basic being that latches on to writers and when they start writing this being gets energy from it uh, it revitalizes them and then they're able to create what this writer is writing into reality and start fucking with them and start basically getting more stronger which is why there's obviously uh, this guy that um, Alan keeps hearing about talking to it especially in the DLC he keeps talking to him um, who's the original writer before Alan, obviously who had the same problem and he's obviously trying to help Alan deal with his take on the problem because obviously everything he's writing is coming to life. And the interesting thing with this as well, obviously throughout the game, you, obviously because most games tend to have collectibles and this game's collectibles, a lot of them are basic. They're not really massive things. So like you've got the, uh, this firmest, uh, firmest, Thermoses, is that the word I'm after? Uh, like your coffee, thermoses. Yeah, I think it's coffee thermoses. There's like fucking uh, like a hundred of them around the map. Um, so you have to kind of collect them. Um, other collectibles are basically finding the radio stations and clicking them on, finding the TVs and activating them. Um, in the DLC, it's uh, finding video. There's 10 video games you can find, alarm clocks. Um, Alan, Alan Wake's uh, like, uh, cardboard cutouts, like the, one, like the Harley Quinn one behind me, but obviously of his ones he uses for his book tours um but then the one that's actually kind of important realistically is um manuscript pages because you find them and they actually tell you kind of stuff that is going to happen later on um and e each episode adds so many to find any annoyance with them is there's usually about anywhere between two to four i think that are locked unless you play nightmare difficulty which i'm not going to play uh i'm not that kind of gamer who like plays on the highest difficulties i'd rather play on the medium or the lower difficulty just to have a nice time um like medium difficulty for me is like if i want to challenge myself i'm definitely i'd never go anywhere higher than that so this one i think has easy normal uh hardcore i think and in nightmare or it might be easy normal and nightmare yeah easy normal nightmare uh, so for me, obviously, I didn't get the full lot of manuscripts. Yeah, I missed a couple anyway, like the, the ones you can find. But it's annoying that I'd have to play on the highest difficulty just to complete the set. But as I say, each one tells a part of the story that you've already encountered or that you might encounter soon. And obviously, if you listen to them all, then it, it's his story. It's his uh, book. And obviously, each episode's titled around that sort of chapter and uh, I, I do like that it's, it's an interesting collectible it's one that makes sense it's, the other ones are just kind of random so it's a bit stupid but that that one for me is one that makes a lot of sense and i'm happy they included that even if it does spoil some stuff later on but a lot of times the narrations kind of spoil it anyway of what's going kind of going on because they obviously other people find your manuscripts and re reference them um, but I, I like the fact as well with this 
obviously early on it's just Alan he's pretty much dealing with it all by himself um, the first bit you actually get is obviously just the tutorial dealing with the darkness and whatnot. But then obviously it goes to daytime, and I like that you get this little. You get, every time it's daytime, it's that brief rest by before the darkness hits again, and then you're engulfed back into this dark world. But I like the fact that early on it's very just Alan. It's him dealing with this threat by himself. Um, he's got to deal with the cops chasing him at one point. He's dealing with a lot of uh, stuff, and not a lot of people are, are knowing what the hell's going on here. But then as the game goes on, you start being Given obviously characters start joining him, him along the way, um, like there's a police officer, uh, he's, he's obviously his obviously manager helps him. My mic, uh, his manager helps him. Um, obviously, you do get this bad guy kind of helping him early on, but that's kind of very early on. But that's dealt with, he's part of the plot for like two episodes, I think. And let's say later on, they start bringing in these other characters, the cop. Uh, is probably the most useful because obviously she does actually shoot alongside you um, and then obviously your best friend is probably useful as well because he does help with the lighting and stuff like that so I mean when he comes back at one point he's got like Christmas lights all around him which is quite funny um, but yeah as the story goes on it pretty much obviously it progresses in a decent way uh, there's, there's some humorous moments and there, there is a lot to unpack in terms of its story and then by the time it finishes and kind of is a happy but sad ending, you get you two uh, DLC expansions which uh, add on to the ending. I've apparently kind of said the American Nightmare game does kind of add a bit to it as well, so I'm going to check that out at some point. I know it's a lot shorter, so I won't really do a podcast on that one because it's a very short game. Whereas this one, it took me all of it, including DLC, about 11 hours, I think, to play it. And my first playthrough, my only complaint, my other complaint would probably be the Epic servers are just wank. Uh, I kept losing connection every now and again and just didn't get uh, my achievements. I had to redo the finale, the last little bit of the finale, the last little bit of both DLCs just to get the achievements for completing them because for some reason it just decided to lose connection randomly um, without even telling me, which is annoying. I wish it would pop up on the screen saying you lost connection, so you might want to fucking stop and get connection again. Uh, fucking that's just epic server problems not fucking the game's problems or it could be the game's problem connected to the servers I don't know I don't fucking know which uh, side is the problem is it the game or is it the server but yeah uh, so anyway obviously you do DLCs that carry on so your first one uh, kind of re explains again what happened in the main game what happened at the end and then kind of thrusts him back into it but instead of him being in the real world with the obviously the darkness coming in there and again this time he's actually inside the darkness and he's being guided by the previous writing like this weird like uh deep sea diver type suit which you saw in the main game but this one adds carries on with a game mechanic you see in the final part of the game so right in the last bit of episode six you get introduced to basically this uh this game mechanic where like it, Obviously, because you've been a writer, the, the text appears on the screen in bright white, which obviously I said earlier on with the issue when it kept falling off the fucking cliff. Obviously, that's this this game mechanics introduced in the finale, just not as ways to get weapons or anything like it is in the DLC. More is just like a way to progress through this this part of the the game, whereas this utilizes it more for uh, survival uh, and also parkour elements because you can use it to create rocks. Um, bridges, things to keep you going forward, because uh, obviously the DLC is more puzzly, essentially, because you've got to use these to get into certain bits, and you've also got to uh, use them to survive hordes, because you keep seeing yourself talk, obviously, on the screen, basically saying, like, Alan keeps popping up being like, ah, oh, there's, uh, walk straight into a trap and shit like that, and then stuff comes up at you, and you got to try and survive this fucker's uh, traps that are set. As as the game goes on and using a lot more parkour elements, I know the the second one particularly is very much more parkour and environmental um, because there's parts when you're kind of jumping over rocks, um, using barrels to basically blow up enemies, um, and then you've also got fucking like this one part which is the last 
act of the episode where there's a lighthouse and you've got to try and get from obviously the, the aim is to get to the lighthouse but when you get to the part where it's literally it's a, a straight line to this lighthouse bit um you've got to uh basically destroy cliffs so the lights can keep shining so you'll see stuff that says like um i think it says i think the word i think it says light or it says destroy i can't remember the top of my head but basically you do that and the cliff will break meaning the lighthouse can actually shine down into certain areas which will then defend you against these fucking darkness creatures that keep coming after you um and you keep doing this all the way up until you get to the lighthouse before which then takes you into the final act which utilizes your memories as weapons which is pretty cool i do like that i do like the fact that a lot of the dark creatures as well are inspired by well, technically they take over and utilize the body and look of characters throughout the game so you see like um a mechanic that you meet early on he gets turned into this darkness creature you see a park ranger that gets turned into one and in the finale obviously the darkness utilized your memories of your best friend uh the obviously the new gods of asgard it uses like and uh, the nuthead's doctor it utilizes them as weapons against you um which is pretty it's pretty cool and it's, it's a decent enough obviously way to end the game and then it ends you pretty much ready to go into the next either American Nightmare or Alan Wake 2. I'm not too sure yet about that fucking little game. I need, I need to look into it uh, to see exactly do I need to play it, do I not need to play it. But I might just play it just to, because apparently only a couple of hours long. But yeah, as I say, overall, fucking across eight episodes, because six main ones and two special ones, it is a decent game. It is somewhat worth checking out, especially if you want to play Alan Wake 2 or get into that universe. Because obviously, for me, Quantum Break was the first time I got introduced into obviously this company's games um as i said i played a little bit of the first alan wake on it free obviously the 360 copy of it on xbox one but never far enough obviously i played a bit of control so it's my first time back into their crazy ass world and obviously after playing quantum break and control i know it's a crazy ass fucking world that they tend to build um so i'm happy that i did sit down finally and play this from start to finish um so def I just need to try and find the time now to just sit down and play Alan Wake 2 because I know that's double the amount of time this fucking was. Plus, you got the two uh, DLCs for that as well, or at least one DLC, and that changes the ending. Or is it? No, so New Game Plus changes the entire ending, apparently. So I I'm going to have to play for that one twice just to fucking get everything. Um, But after it did well, the game was. I've, I've definitely got to check it out. It, it definitely seems like a game that's up my alley but i know it changes from this one i know this one is more puzzly at times obviously whereas that one i think i've read that it's more of a survival horror it goes full into the survival horrorness whereas this one is kind of borderline survival horror but it's not like say like a resident evil game it's not that level of survival horror it's very borderline whereas i can see obviously and as I, what i've read with the second one it goes full into the survival horror realm so it'd be interesting to see how that does. But I know that one as well. You get two characters. You get Alan, who's coming out of the darkness or dealing with the darkness, dark realm still. And obviously you get this new FBI officer because I'm guessing possibly that could be, there might be some references to the FBI that you see in this because there is an FBI that hunt you very early in the game in this. Uh, but again, they're taken out. As soon as, soon as the cop gets dr driven more into the plot, the FBI is pretty much taken out of the equation. Um... I, I did find it funny with the story. There's there's one part which I was like, what the, f even the even the one character was like, it makes no sense because when you're running from the cops, obviously the darkness is kind of attacking the cops, like taking out the helicopters with uh, the birds because obviously there's crows that you gotta use the light to get rid of. Obviously they're taking out the helicopters. The car's being flipped by the fucking darkness, and you're getting further and further. And eventually, obviously this guy's pretty much kind of, the main FBI guy is kind of pretty much saying that you've done it all, and because he's obviously you've read it in your script and even the, the obviously the main uh, sheriff of this town is it's just like how the fuck is he taking out all my deputies you've probably seen the carnage Th that makes no fucking sense obviously as soon as uh she sees obviously the darkness obviously she realized what the fuck's going on but it's it's just crazy how this, this guy is just like starts blaming you because of uh the manuscript 
But it's, it's crazy that they think that he's like because of this manuscript that he's caught like he's threatening everyone, even though obviously Ike is, but it's not fully his fault. Um, but still, it's 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 just some of the films and the characters like arguments to what's going on is just stupid. Um, yeah, obviously, obviously, I like as well with this game as as it goes along, it sort of introduces. Uh, improvements to your weapons that you've already been carrying, so it gets rid of a lot of. Uh, it's like early on, for example, you obviously the pistol's the only thing that pretty much stays the same throughout. But as the game goes on, obviously you get different uh, torches. So you get the basic torch, you get a, a stronger flashlight. I think it's called. You get a fucking like a, a, a I think they refer to it as a lantern. And then in the DLC, you can get a stronger lantern, um, which is a lot a lot stronger. And obviously in terms of the guns. Uh, the rifle pretty much stays the same as well. It's just the shotgun changes between a basic double barrel shotgun, I think it is, or just a basic shotgun to a pump action, which is a lot fucking stronger, a lot better. Um, and it also adds like a lot of other gameplay elements as it goes along. So you've got the, the flares get introduced eventually, which are very useful. The flare, a flare gun is very early introduced, but obviously a, a basic flare is introduced later, and then flashbangs are introduced, which are really uh, powerful weapons. To use against the darkness um so it's the case of a lot of times just making sure you have a lot of your um weapons stocked up i know in that's the dlc you can pretty much keep getting loads and loads so it's not a problem it's just the main game you gotta try and keep an eye on how much you've got because obviously your batteries are kind of the one of the biggest things you need on top of ammunition because you're not going to get past a lot of the fucking monsters in the game but still, it's it, it's a it's it's something that obviously if you never checked it out, jump on this epic sale what right now. It, you can get the first game on sale, or you can just pick it up for free. I think the offer still on for if you pick up the second game, you can get it for nothing. It's definitely worth checking out. It's definitely yeah, uh, interesting. I like the episodic side of it because you can literally probably just do an episode, jump out, jump back into the next episode. I do like that. Uh, but yeah, still, it's it's it, it's something I recommend checking out. Um, I think overall, if I give it a scoring, I'll give it like an, I want to give it an 8.8. I won't go any further just because the, the glitches I had and obviously the frustration with some of the gameplay mechanics, especially in the uh, le last two chapters. I think that those are the two chapters as well. That's where I got hit by the most uh, glitches in terms of uh, just the graphical nature of it. Uh, so I feel like an 8.8 .8 is a reasonable scoring. Um, I, I do hope a lot. I do like the idea of this. If you're not going to rebuild a game from scratch, remasters are pretty decent enough because, yes, they are kind of rebuilds. Obviously, the graphics are usually upped compared to what they were originally. So I do, I do like when games go the remaster route. I know Assassin's Creed did it with the Ezio Collection, which is okay. Obviously, if you get, if you're not gonna, if you want like a, a just to get some back out into circulation, um. That looks a, a bit of an improvement, and remaster is a, a good way of doing it. But obviously, that's why I, I like. I do like what obviously Capcom done with the Resident Evil games, where they've completely rebuilt the game and thrown it out. So you've got a complete rebuilt game. Um, and so it, it obviously you've got the uh, there's rumors of the God of War one happening. So either that's going to be the Resident Evil route, or it could be this kind of route of a remaster. Um, so it's either remaster or rebuilt. I feel like the, it. I feel like it's a good way, especially with like very old games making a remaster um just to get people who haven't played it yet to go back into it um is a good is a good route and as i said the graphics are pretty decent um apart from the few glitches you do get with just like textures which is isn't a big problem you can look past it because as i said the rest of the game looks pretty good and it has a really good story good soundtrack it has a lot of good stuff about it which outweigh the negatives which makes it a decent um remaster uh and i definitely w once i've played element 2 i probably will talk about it in a podcast uh, just gotta try and find the time there to sit there and actually play it i mean i was meant to record this podcast hours ago but i had to fucking get rid of the christmas tree from behind me and just try and tidy everything up i had to wait for people to fucking get rid of the christmas decorations uh, stop making noise and it, it's took me like an extra fucking like god knows how many hours before I've been able to sit down and talk about this so 
if I've missed anything that I want to talk about, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so if you've played Alan Wake uh, or Alan Wake Remastered, uh, put your thoughts in the comments below on the game, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, next week, 50-50, it'll be another solo review, or I'll get Connor on to basically just discuss something before our obviously our special episode coming up, because obviously uh, we are now two episodes away from 100. Finally made it to 100 episodes for a podcast without rebooting it like we did last time. Uh, but of course, that's like an our special award ceremony one. Obviously, the awards are live right now for voting. You can vote, obviously, on uh, Instagram and Facebook. You can go in the comments on each post and just pick your winner. Um, or if you uh, want, I can put the link on the community section on uh, YouTube. Because that link will then be an easier way of going through the voting uh, if you want that obviously you just go on youtube and put in the community section that that's some obviously just comment on the last post i did put up relate to the awards and then i'll update that and put the link below it uh it will spoil two jokes we got for it but if that's what you want then i'll put that on um but yeah either way uh, i think that pretty much covers it uh so you can check out the podcast art on spotify apple podcast uh, audible apple music etc 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 um or you can just check out the video on YouTube. Um, so that is it. Obviously, you can uh, check out all the other content uh, over on YouTube for this channel, uh, from live streams to just pre-recorded videos to all the other podcasts we have done over the years. Um, so yeah, obviously, that is it for the first one of 2024, podcast-wise. Obviously, we're hopefully... I'm hoping to do less breaks like last year because there's some moments where there weren't an episode going out because of wasn't able to do it, record with Connor or was ill. So I'm hoping that that's not the case and there will be an episode every single Friday. Um, or if we do a live one on a Sunday. So hopefully we'll eradicate the miss a week section uh, and have one every week. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode and I shall hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.